So now what we're looking to do, I call it um, these, these bionic strategies where we're trying to marry two things together. <sighs> so we might marry together an opportunity and a weakness. We might, like, for, do you want an example of that? Opportunity and weakness. Okay. So there's an opportunity that, there's an opportunity in events. So there's bigger events happening all the time. So HealerCon is an opportunity for me uh, to have a big event and to have an event that grows into bigger and bigger events. What's my weakness? We all know it. I've mentioned it 25,000 times. Diversity. If I marry those two things, opportunity and diversity, now I have a strategy. Now I have something I can work in. What if HealerCon is the way I can bring together a more diverse community around healing? Seems so simple, doesn't it? But it's, but it's, it, it's not necessarily intuitive. You want to get there strategically and you want to have a lot of different options. It doesn't mean it's the best strategy. It doesn't mean it's the only strategy, but it's on the board. So now what you want to do is you want to look at all the stuff you generated, the most potent things, like what are you definitely going to need? We heard from a few people today that like they definitely need tech support. Like for them to be their own technician, probably not in their zone of genius, probably not in their zone of competence, probably doesn't define winning to become competent in that. There's just a lot of devil in the details. For some people, it does make sense to be your all-in-one everything in your, in, your, in your side hustle or in your business. For other people, it just, nope, you're gonna have to figure out how to make more money so you can pay someone to do the things that need to get done right without it taking all your time and without it making you like totally depressed on the weekend because you're trying to figure out how MailChimp integrates with constant contact <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. I want, I want you to come up with, again, we're, we're gonna go for quantity over quality. So try to marry and get six to 10 strategies out of marrying, you're just joining together some of those skills, assets, resources, strengths, weaknesses, threats, opportunities. You're just trying to merge some of these things together. So there's a sentence stem that can work with this uh, and it's how might I. So like how might I combine my weakness and diversity with my uh, opportunity to create a conference? So just so for some of us who are getting stuck, just put that sentence stem in there. How might I leverage the accomplishment of having written a book with the opportunity of online book sales? So you're just trying to get, this is a very generative, creative part. And you just want to make sure that you're writing down the most important things. Like you're really looking for, like if you don't attack this thing that's probably stood in your way in the past, you know, whether it's like time management as a, as a weakness uh, with an opportunity of like amazing online time management tools, uh, then, and that's what's going to keep you from succeeding, then, uh, then you're not doing this part right. So to do it right, you just have to be like super honest with yourself. Of like, what, what do you need to have strategy around? All right. Anyone's brain hurt yet? Yes. That's what we don't tell you in the marketing material. Uh, but it's, it's, it's like any muscle. You just strengthen your, when you start to strengthen your strategy muscle, when a big problem arises, you apply strategy. You apply these structures around strategy and they're all in master review. They're all in the book. There's nothing that I'm talking about today that's not coming right from there. And so when that happens, uh, there's a puppies away. Um, there's an ability to to think about something in a in a structured way that'll give a different result than thinking about it in an unstructured way. And it also gets you out of the the emotional body. The emotional body is very helpful in this, in terms of just realizing like what are the big issues going to be, and matching those with like what are some of the bigger accomplishments. And what are some of the bigger strengths that you have that like, you've got to shine that light brighter, right? Because there's certain things like that, that like, you know, some people call it imposter syndrome or whatnot. Like if you, I meet tons of healers in my work um, as 
someone who guides wellness pros into making more money and having a better life and having a bigger impact. I mean, a lot of wellness pros who they've got the skills, they've got the 10,000 hours, they've got the 50,000 hours. What they need to do to like for next level is shine the light. Like they need to point the spotlight on them. And they're right. And there's this willingness to be able to do that. Uh, that that grows with time. So these muscles over time, they help you like realize like, oh, I guess that part's non-negotiable in this next level. So I better figure out how to do that, right? And so if the emotional body's resistant to that, sometimes that's a sign of like, oh, that's just who I've got to become next. And then when you do it, you notice like, oh my gosh, that was actually really fun. And I met all these other people and oh my gosh, like these other opportunities started to come in. And now my SWAT's really different because there's these opportunities that I wasn't even aware of before, like events or a thing or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And that's usually, that's usually how this stuff works. Okay. I like Katie's comment on cats. Cats will let you think you've trained them. Yeah. My Russian dog owner, she was like, uh, I don't have cats because cats treat you like the servant, whereas dogs you can train to serve you. <laughs> uh, okay, so now with the strategy, you want to pick the ones, you, you really want to narrow it down to two or three strategies that are going to make the biggest difference. So I'm giving you quite a bit of homework with this. You'll have the recording of it, right? So you can kind of go back and press pause and re-listen to the, these, this, like particularly like this hour, hour and a half will be helpful. Of just listening and going back and being like, okay, what are the three strategies? And you might need to mix some strategies with others. That part for me usually takes a couple of hours. If I'm, if I'm willing to sit with it and do it right, I'll usually choose early morning hours and I'll usually be caffeinated and I'll have exercise. Like I treat it as a peak performance exercise because I, I, I want every brain cell in an on state. So for me, that means I'll go to bed early. I'll be hydrated. I'll do some like cool Michael Seeley hypnotic meditation. When I go to sleep, when I wake up, I'll hydrate, eliminate, exercise, cold plunge, do two hours of bionic strategy work. Because what I want to come out with is before I apply my strategy into the field of time, I want to make sure I've got the best strategies. I want to make sure I've really highlighted exactly to the best of my knowledge at this point, what I need to do to move, to move the needle forward, what I'm really going to need, who I'm going to need, what I'm going to need, what skills, tools, who relationships, what I can leverage to make it happen in a much easier way. So back to that healer, Example, if a healer is willing to leverage their wellness skills, marry that to a weakness around exposure, that's not a bad strategy. How do I amplify my exposure on my specific healing skills? How do I be more helpful to people and expose that? Okay, I want to take, uh, I just want to make sure this is clear. So the next stage of this is where you, you hone your strategies into two or three strategies. More is not better. It's as many as it takes and the best of your, to the best of your ability to get it done. So some of you know you, have, you need a strategy that involves time management. Some of you know you need a strategy that involves techie support. Some of you know you need a strategy uh, that really accounts for the other things that are winning, which might then mean that you're doing you know, less things with other people. or more things with other people. So that's the next, that's the next stage is like, you, you want to use the strategies um, as your guideline. And then what happens, let me just show you. These vital verbs really help. So these are verbs that help to make a strategy come to life. So otherwise I just have like a strength and a weakness. So a strength might be, uh, I have cash in the bank, a weakness might be, I have, um, say the vision is HealerCon and there's whatever, it, it sells out, sell out HealerCon. If I put a number of that, we're actually going, I, the number's not on, it's not known right now uh, because we just moved the date, which means we'll probably amplify the number. So we'll say a thousand people sell out HealerCon 2021, an in-person three-day interactive event for wellness pros to up-level their skills and to network and rejuvenate. That's the vision. Strength, we got money. Weakness, 
we don't have diverse community. What's the verb? How do I leverage? Uh, well, and my strength, I could actually say, in this case, money probably doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't hurt, but it might not be the strength I want to marry to that weakness. The strength I might have is like, I have developed platforms. I have a developed social media platform. I have a developed podcast platform. How can I marry that strength to that weakness? How do I leverage, if we use that, how do I leverage my platforms to attract influencers, a more diverse group of influencers to develop relationships for HealerCon? And it's not now for 18 months and 18 months. Okay. Is that clear as mud? So the, the verbs help activate the strategy. And, and these aren't the only verbs. And again, you'll have the slides for this, but they're verbs that they work. They're proven. They help. They help companies of all sizes, companies of one, which is you. All right. So at that point, you have the beginnings of a game plan. And then the question is, how might you do it? So if I keep with this example around diversity with HealerCon, then I might say, well, a milestone for that would be that in, I'll give myself three months. In three months, I have six, uh, six influencers on my podcast that have a niche in wellness and diversity. Now I have a specific goal and now I've got to bring that into the field of time. So how am I going to get those people? Well, there better be time on my calendar to research or network. I might do some of my own research. I might do that an hour a week, but I also might just pick up the phone or for those of you who still use phones, um, I might pick up the phone and call my people that I know are intersecting in wellness and diversity and see who they recommend. That might be faster, but I need to schedule either of those activities in. So do you guys see how the strategy went to a milestone? The milestone is six people who are influencers in the diversity and wellness space on my podcast within three months. And now I can bring it down into my calendar. Well, each week I'm gonna allocate an hour of time to my own research and an hour of time to phone calls. So if I have an hour of time for phone calls, I might need to schedule those phone calls so that they actually happen. So then I might allocate a half an hour time to scheduling. And that would be a two and a half hours a week that I would now need a time block for. So if I did that, do you guys think I would nail it? Do you guys think I would have six people on my podcast and start developing some relationships? Yeah. Do you think it's a good strategy? And it's a good strategy because I'm leveraging a strength with and by marrying it to a specific weakness. So the good thing is that it only hurts your brain in the critical issues part and the bionic strategies part. Like the critical issues, SWAT and bionic strategies, that's the only time it really hurts your brain. And it's finite. It doesn't go on and on. It's just a, it's a process to move through and it's a skill to strengthen. At some point, you'll look forward to it. At some point, it won't hurt your brain so much. Or if it hurts your brain, you'll be like, oh, I love this feeling. Just like those of you, like I ride my bike up the mountain and I kind of love the burn some days when I'm hydrated and ready for it. I kind of love the burn. Comments? Y'all just like over the Zoom screen, want to get yeah. out of here. <laughs> can you hear me? Laura, hi. hi. Hi, can you explain the bionic strategies again? The strength plus yeah. one weakness. How do you yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Tell me what, so one of the ways of, it, of it, like, we'll figure, let's figure one out for you. So what is a critical issue? So a critical issue is something that like, if, if you don't address it strategically or with a strategy, there's no chance. There's really no chance of this future vision coming into fruition. So what, what, what might that be for you? So let's just talk about that casually. We're not going to try to get it right. We're just going to try to get in the right ballpark. Okay. So what is my strategy? No, nope. what's a critical issue? A uh, critical issue is focusing. Okay. And, what's, and what do you, in terms of your vision, like what is winning next? 
for you? What would, how would you know if you're at the next level of the vision for your life? Well, I'm, I'm reinventing myself again. So um, trying to create a tiny healing house where I live and I have. Cool. So that's yeah. the vision. You have a tiny healing house. Are you renting it or are you well, living in it? It's my own little home. Your house. It's, it's in a fantastic location and it's just me. And I would like to have someone come here for maybe start off on the weekends <laughs> and do like a weekend retreat where I okay. help them find out their constitution and show them how to cook and exercise and then go on to weeks. Beautiful. Retreats. So what is, what could stop that from happening? Like, what are going to be the hardest things to do that you have a good sense of like, you're going to need to do that, or that's going to need to get done. Um, building the website and getting the word out. Okay, great. So website and exposure. Yes. Great. Is there, and so those are going to be under weakness, right? Cause they don't exist Definitely. under weakness. So is there a strength? that you have that might help you do those things or get those things done? Willingness. <laughs> you're, you're, that's huge. Never underestimate willingness. Uh, I know, and that's like my biggest one. I'm, you're willing, you're willing yeah, to learn what you I need to learn. I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of obstacles, like learning things and okay. being on track, but I am willing. What are you willing to do? I'm willing to do, at this point, I'm willing to, to go all in because I can't massage for the rest of my life. So I need to think of something else. And this has been my dream okay. for you know, a few years now. Okay. And now with COVID and all that, I was thinking, well. Are you willing to invest? Yes. Are you willing to put some money to it? Great. Yes. How much? I know, right? The hard questions. And uh, anyone who has this, like, get the number down. It'll help. Because then you'll know, like, I'm willing to invest 50 bucks or 5,000 bucks or 500 bucks. Um, at this point, I could, I could do 5,000 with no problem. Okay. So we have a willingness to invest money in website and in exposure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So at this point, I wish Barb were still here. She'll have to listen to this later. Uh, our CFO, our in-house CFO, we have our own fractional CFO. I'm so happy about that. At this point, we're, we're going to want to know how best to use that money. Has anyone ever like spent too much money on the wrong thing? Yeah, everyone's nodding on that one. Okay. So especially in an area where we're not an expert, it just happened on my team with our, we just, uh, we've had, we've had an app in development. Uh, and we were like, we did a ton of due diligence on the company to develop the app. And it's still like, we're still disappointed at the end of the day. Cause a lot of information they didn't disclose in their sales process that actually really affects everything on the back end. So even like those who are pretty good at due diligence can still totally mess this up. So we want to protect this. We got a nest egg. We got five grand. We want to use it right. We don't want to be bummed out about where that five grand went. Cause so I could just coach floor right now and be like, most of that money should go into exposure. The website should just be, you know, like you can create your own Wix website in a day and just get the picks up, like have, you know, get a good teenager. That's good at like an iPhone. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just like using my expertise to solve the problem. Instead, what we want to do is, is like, how can we use strategy to solve the problem? So in there, there's, When you have an asset like money, because money's so liquid, it can go really fast. Okay, I got to take off my crown. I could spend more if I had to, but just no need. I no need. Yeah. No need. But what we need is someone, we have a weakness in knowing how to best spend that money. Like that's to me, like where, and it, sometimes it's hard to know this stuff on our own, which is why it's great when you get close to your critical issues is to talk to someone else that has a really different perspective and have them ask questions. Sometimes talking to a bunch of different people before we apply strategy. 
uh, can be super helpful. And so I usually call the smartest people I know. Um, I have my, my list of smartest people I know is expanding because that's been one of my weaknesses that I've turned into a strength. I now have about five people I can call for high level strategy. A huge asset. Like that's a huge, like it's so hard to understand what an asset that is. But if you don't have that yet, that's a weakness. But my guess is, Flora, is you know some people that might be really good at this who might be on the conservative side financially, who might just kind of help you be able to develop some insight around this or develop this into a, yeah, sometimes I put down skills and tools. Sometimes in the mix of there, there's just like general education. So there's phenomenal books on like general education around this. Like one of them is the hundred dollar startup. That guy will not waste your money. <laughs> but there's a ton of books like that. So then again, willingness is her strength. Willingness to learn how to best invest her $5,000 to develop her website and attract the right people to sign up. Now we have, do you guys see, we have, we now have a strategy and it's built in a strength and a weakness. It kind of, doesn't it start to seem like magic? Like yeah. my coach, Tyler, who taught me this, he's like, at some point, like you hear the choir sing. If you hear the choir sing, you have a good strategy. If the choir's not singing yet, keep working it. Keep like chiseling away, smoke coming out of the ears until you're like, that's, that's a good strategy. Like if I were to do that, that could work. Does that, does that do you, are you getting a feel for it, Flora? Yes, yes. And just and talking to the two people that I talked to, just, just brought some great ideas. And I mean, these are ideas I can start using this week. Right. And yeah. then I never thought about like tapping my own clients who are. Yeah, willing to help. Yeah, and they all have businesses and websites yeah. and all that so there's also this thing called google and this other thing called youtube which have like <laughs> so much <laughs> like i ask youtube a lot of questions like how to build a website for a hundred dollars like i would ask that i would ask youtube that see what youtube says okay and that's a willing that's going so strategically again there's a willingness to invest time are you all hearing that she's willing to invest her time so willingness to invest time to educate herself Educate yourself on this. That's a weakness. Educate yourself in what? How to develop the website and maximize exposure on a budget of $5,000. So we have parameters in there. That's a strategy. That's a good, that to me is like, that's a, that's a solid strategy. Then you might get more specific on time. 10 hours a week. Let's just throw that in there. Five hours a week, whatever it is, five hours a week. Mm -hmm. Now we can get specific. So then when you go out into like the milestone category of like, where do you want to be by when? Where do you want to be in a month? Where do you want to be in three months? Uh, you might want to have just measured this. I, I picked this up when I interviewed Nira Yal about six weeks ago, who wrote a book called Indistractable. Okay, the puppy is now trying to destroy the power system behind my setup, so <laughs> stop that. <laughs> uh, and he said, just allocate time rather than trying to actually hit an objective. So the objective might be to have the website built. Allocating time might just be like, spend four, t four hours on YouTube, finding out how to build a website for a hundred bucks. So the more I've used that strategy, the happier I've been, because I'm, I'm more, I'm starting to understand how much I can get in a certain amount of time that's moving education forward. <laughs> 